that she learned the art of physical punishment. With the harsh punishment, you have a lot of domestic violence. Um, when, when a child is constantly defending themselves from the rest of the world, they cannot grow emotionally because they're always defending themselves against whatever is coming at them. When I started going to school down there, it was a, it was a good thing because I got to hang around with the people I, I got to play with all day long. But then they try to teach us this stuff that we don't know anything about. At the time, I, at, I knew the language pretty well. I grew up with Seneca language. I got my hands hit a lot for, the, for, for doing it, and I got to paddle a lot for doing it. But in second grade, Mrs. Cooley had us do a play, and we all had a great time with that play. And the play she chose was Little Black Sambo. And none of us really had been exposed to black people before, you know, so we didn't know any difference, you know, so we put on the little black, black sample uh, play, and uh, when she picked the cast, um, she picked, uh, she told us this too, she picked the person in the room uh, that was of the darkest skin to play sample, and, um, and we all had our part. So it, it was a very, I guess, subtle way to to begin that whole teaching about about um, racism, you know, and who is and who isn't, and the way we feel about people that are different than ourselves. So, and it, it, it kind of got you know built in at a, at a really young age. When I began to search out why I did the things that I did, then I began begin to understand what my father went through. I can remember my mother kind of ran our household like an institution. We had our daily chores, weekly chores posted to the refrigerator each week. We had to make our beds like in, in military style. That's exactly how she taught us. Everything was just prim and proper to the ironing, all of that. But it was almost in the same structure that she learned and she adopted in the only way that she knew how as a resident of a boarding school. Have we passed some of that on to our children? Yes, I think so. Is there going to be a point in time where our children's children will, will begin to move away from some of that? I, I think so, because I think in part of the healing um, that our families and our communities are going through and actually looking at um, some of this impact and being able to talk about it in a good and healthy way and to understand and to reflect not in a negative way helps us just to move beyond that and to try and get back a lot that we lost. So I'm just here today to look for that healing. I'm not looking for anything else. And I am looking to forgive. I forgave my mother, but I want to I wanna forget Thomas Indian School because I know in my heart that my mother did the best she could by me. You know, she wasn't to blame. She had an institution that was her parent. Kids were taken from here and sent to boarding schools like that. I mean, they would take young children, I'd say five, six years old, and send them. That's hard on a child. That's say change their way of life, you'd say, by doing that. They were used to living here, I mean. Everybody knows that. And everybody that really lived here, I don't think they could move from here. Nobody said anything. But I come down here so I can talk about my father because I'm proud of him. I'm proud of the life that he led and that he did the best he could with me and my, my sister and my brother. How long will it take us to really get back the whole idea of what a family is? What, what um, you know, father, mother, son, daughter, what, what does that bond mean? And not only just that, but even extending out to your extended family. Because these children, even if they didn't have parents, if they were truly orphaned, or if they had parents who truly couldn't take care of them, what happened to the extended family? That was also cut. Uh, you know, that's the point of it. We were only Native people. So, you know, yeah, so they let that stuff go. So it would take a long time to undo 
and I can't say that it would ever happen because to heal the apology from the government that allowed this to happen I would say would never apologize and who what what uh What good would a hollow apology be? That's how I look at it. For an apology would have to be sincere. And how could it be sincere if it came from a guy that never went through that experience? Or was the one behind it? It was before their time that it started. So how could they be apologi apologetic towards what they did to us? Hearing what he suffered through was a tough pill to swallow. I mean, he was a five-year-old boy, a little boy. Imagine your five-year-old being taken away from you. Or you at five years old being taken away from your mother. I mean, how would you feel? I couldn't imagine being taken away from my mom and dad at five years old. I would have never let it happen. I would have fought. Oh, hey. 